Hey there, today I'd like to demo a new module from Cella called Cognitive Shift. It is a sequencer based on the concept of shift register with a few pretty advanced features. I got inspiration for it uh, from Laura Mill's Double Knot, uh, which has two shift registers, uh, which are very playable and musical. And Cognitive Shift is somewhat uh, mimics functions of it, but also adds a few advanced features. So by itself, it is a 8-bit digital shift register. So basically the core of it is 8-bit uh, array of values between 0 and 1. And uh, on a clock, it can shift these values forward. You have to provide a clock to it. Uh, you have data input to provide a high signal on the clock uh, to be recorded into first bits. And then on next clock, everything shifts forward. So that's a pretty simple uh, principle. Uh, the data signal can receive anything. Uh, you can send uh, uh, logical gates to it, or you can send oscillator or noise signal uh, to generate random values, volume, uh, values. and uh, you can also adjust the threshold uh, which it has to pass uh, to be recorded. So let's start uh, playing with it and uh, I'll show how it works. So I'm just taking a simple square LFO to send a clock into, uh, into cognitive shift and uh, you can enter data in a few ways. You can either send a signal to data logic XOR input. I'll talk about them later. You can also write and erase bits as clock ticks. So we can click um, and on the clock, uh, it will read oh, are we writing and it will input the value. So you can dynamically generate sequence uh, as it goes. So I'll connect output from cognitive shift to scope so you can see uh, what comes out and also I have a drum sample playing with it. But as you can see, uh, shift register moves forward and the last bit just gets thrown away. So you can uh, just use it like that um, and just send a data signal to the input and uh, it will run um, volumes continuously, for example, random values. Uh, but the interesting uh, part uh, of the module is self-patching capabilities. So I put quite a lot of effort to make it work um, correct, so to speak, um, so that uh, you know, the, the timing between gates and data reading is correct. So it's very playable and also um, it's really good for cross-patching with another cognitive shift or a few of them uh, to build a longer registers. So let's show self-patching mode. So for example, we can output last bit back to the data. And as you can expect, it will just loop the sequence um, into eight steps. I forgot to tell that you can also edit the sequence manually. If you click the edit button, you can just click consecutive steps and it will record them. And if you release, it will play them. Okay, so this is pretty repetitive. But this is where uh, power of two additional inputs comes in. If you're not familiar, maybe you're familiar with the concept of uh, nonlinear shift uh, register um, or linear feedback shift register, pardon me. Um, it is when you take another bit of the shift register and you soar, uh, which is a logical operator uh, with the input bit uh, sent to the data. And you can just combine a few of them and it actually allows you to generate 
add variability to the sequence. So XOR gives you positive output only if one input is low and another is high and vice versa. If they both high or both low, uh, it outputs zero. But it's easier to uh, see how it works. So you can see it starts changing. Uh, XOR is actually a very nice function uh, to use uh, because um, it kind of changes the data all the time um, in, a, in a meaningful way. But if nothing is connected to XOR input, nothing changes. So if you hear that a little bit longer, uh, you might find that it is still repetitive. And for that, there's additional input called logic, which is just universal name. Uh, it actually supports different logic functions, logic gates. And in Cortex menu, you can choose which function it performs. Uh, and these are all standard logic gate uh, functions. So if you connect any other bit to it, you start getting even more complex sequence. You can use just any any output uh, and play with it. You can also make a sequence shorter, um, but still use other bits uh, to change uh, the input. And you can always write over what's currently in the shift register. So if you push down the right button, it will fill in a buffer. You can also click erase. Uh, and I think the good function for uh, use for that is that if something is got stuck in the, um, you know, boring sequence, you can always uh, change a bit uh, result by mixing in a few bits or erasing a few bits. Uh, of course, you can clear register um, with a clear button or sending signal, uh, sending gate to it, but it's easy to restart thing, uh, just writing something back. Uh, as I mentioned, um, you can also write data, logic, and XOR uh, with uh, any signal, external signal, uh, and useful function for that, or useful property for that, is you can modulate the threshold. So that will, you know, you can use it musically. Um, for example, if we connect back to noise, uh, noise just goes from minus five to five, and if you increase threshold, you just get less values, right? And you can modulate the threshold. If we put it back, you get just more inputs uh, into shift register. Okay, so another powerful thing implemented in cognitive shift are four digital to audio uh, analog, sorry, converters. Three of them are overlapping four bit uh, digital to analog converters. Uh, so first one takes these four bits and converts that to is basically a binary number, which you can scale to CV. Uh, second one goes from third to six, and third one from five to eight. And that results in the CV signal that you can use to modulate uh, some external tool. So let's see how it works. So if we connect back everything, so you can see it just starts modulating. Uh, you have a turn inverters or gain for each input, so you can scale it down. These three uh, DACs uh, modulate signal between zero and 10 volts. And you can also invert that to go negative. So the fourth DAC actually utilizes all four bits. So it's a eight bit number. Uh, it gives you more resolution and output from it is uh, bipolar uh, versus uh, unipolar output from these three. Let's connect it. 
So it goes from minus 5 to 5. Uh, you can, of course, also scale it and inverse that. And you can modulate um, anything with it, right? And last but not least, we can talk about different output modes for bits. Currently, we have clock mode selected. You can choose them from context menu. And uh, in the clock mode, the output from bit is high. If it is uh, true, oh, uh, when it's uh, when the bit is filled, uh, and when the clock is high, when it goes down, uh, gate goes down. The other option is gates, and uh, I'll turn back sound to demonstrate the difference. So on each, uh, even if you have consecutive bits, uh, you will have individual gates. If we switch to gates, it will output high gate if the value is high. And you can see that it changes gate pattern uh, significantly because it starts merging consecutive positive bits together. And lastly, of course, you can just output triggers. All right, so I think that's all I wanted to tell about the new module. I think it's quite playable, a good techno machine, or it can be anything. You can also experiment uh, with uh, logic types. You can use multiple cognitive shifts to generate longer sequences. And it can also generate CV signal that you can send to quantizer, modulate uh, parameters of your sound source, and so on and so forth. And you can have different element of variability in your sequences. So perhaps that's it, and I'll finish with a small um, play through uh, with the module. Thank you and enjoy. Thank you. 